I am Zach Blair, and I am Rise Against. Uh, I'm the guitar player in Rise Against. All right, um, and Revolutions Per Minute. Yes. It turns 20 this year. Oh. Or it has turned 20. Has it? It has. Um, um, so when, when is, was the last time that you uh, yourself listened to it? Oh, it's been a bit. But, you know, we just did the shows at the Metro in Chicago to commemorate their 40th year anniversary. And we played a lot of songs off of Revolution for a minute. Because we did a bunch of deep cuts and B-sides, songs we don't get to play a lot. Um, and we did play quite a bit of that. Uh, but, you know, kind of a, quite a bit of our entire catalog. So it was really fun. So, you know, you kind of have to stay in touch with your the past mm. catalog, you know. Um, but it, it's really fun to get to do that. You know, when you play a festival like this, you kind of play the songs that you know, you know what I mean? Or the ones that you just have to play. And, and fortunately, we're a band that has a list of songs that we just have to play for the fans and whatnot. And we should be so lucky, you know. Yeah, of yeah. course. Yeah. So what's your uh, personal connection to, to that record? Well, the you time know, it was released. I believe, um, you know, I, I wasn't on that record. Um, and I sort of met the guys before that record, but we all share Bill Stevenson from The Descendants of Black Flag and all. And Bill, that was his first record that he produced with the guys. So I really, they kind of came into my world because I was already recording in bands with Bill at the Blasting Room. We had a band called Only Crime around that time uh, where I was, you know, we were in a band together. So I just kind of lived at that studio in Fort Collins, Colorado. And that was the first one he had done for them. So they were then sort of, absorbed in our extended family and we all became real tight and then we toured together not much long after that um and sort of started my my relationship with everybody and you know i've been in the band 17 years now mm. so it's been almost since then but yeah 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 uh speaking of songs you have to play uh there's the song called savior which, yeah that's uh, the one almost has like uh gotta look it up 575 million streams on spotify jesus christ right is it now. that much um, did you expect this song to be Not at all. this popular? As a matter of fact, I remember when Tim brought it in, completely finished pretty much, you know, and it was like, we, I loved it, and Tim, being the guy that brought it in, was kind of like, eh, we'll see, <coughs> you know, we'll see, and, <coughs> sorry, my thoughts dry. Um, uh, we have something to drink, oh. if, you, if you want to. So. Yeah. Sorry, guys. No worries. Jet lag. God damn it. You can start again with the answer if you like. <coughs> anyway, I was saying, I remember when Tim brought the song in. And there was a chance it wasn't even going to make it to the record, <coughs> honestly. Um, he was, he liked it. I mean, it was his song. He brought it in. I loved it. And I thought it was great. And then we put it out. We didn't know, you know. And then it just... God, it just had such legs. It had such a life of its own. And now it's the song that we have to play. You know, at the, the aforementioned Metro shows, we played that one every night. We didn't play, we didn't repeat any other songs. And we didn't even play other, like, I guess, hits, but we played that one every night. Mm, yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah, you, you have to. And we sh again, we should be so lucky. We should be so lucky that there's a crowd full of people that want to hear yeah. anything we do. Um, what do these numbers actually uh, mean to you and the band? <coughs> what do they mean to us? Yeah. Well, they're everything. Because seeing that number means that there are that many people that want to hear anything you've done. Which, I mean, you've got to think, we all started doing this in vans mm -hmm. or cars, lugging our own stuff, playing to no one for really long periods of time. And it was the greatest years of my life and our lives. But, you know, you're a kid. You have the benefit of youth and, you know, no, no real quality of life. And you'll sleep on a floor or in a park and get your equipment stolen. And, you know, hmm. and for there to be some sort of affirming number like that, where there's actual uh, proof that what you're doing and what you've done and what you've set yourself out to do with your life, um, has some sort of meaning to somebody else so yeah. it comes out of here and out of here and it's resonating with somebody else i mean it's it's everything mm. you know um recently you've there have been two remixes which was quite new i guess to the band uh, the one one uh, the one with uh, health 
and the other one with idols. Yes. Yeah. Um, is there something you you would like to to uh, experiment with in the future too? Yeah, I was really excited about all that stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm a huge fan of idols, and then I was a fan of health afterwards. But the fact that those guys wanted to work with us, you know, we, we also are in our own bubble of touring and just being rise against and doing yeah. our thing that we don't know if there's other, you know, um, influential newer, younger artists, if we're on their radar at all, mm. you know. So when these opportunities come up, you know, we absolutely want to want to collaborate and work with other people. Yeah. I was really I was really happy with how all this came out, too. Because they were kind of left field, you know. They kind of they really did their own thing with it, which was great. Mm. Yeah. Um, there's there's other band called uh, No of X also playing yeah. this festival, uh, yeah. and the band has a special connection with them. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. What are your thoughts about uh, them quitting? I mean, we'll see if they do. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, we were just talking about that on the way over here. Actually, it's pretty funny. But you know how s most bands. They say it, and then it doesn't happen. They would be the one that I would think would actually do it because Mike is the kind of person that if you tell him he's not going to do something, man, he's going to do it, <laughs> you know? Um, but, yeah, I just, you know, there should be a statue erected to, to Mike Burkett because of all the bands he's helped out and believed in. Mm. Um, in my own band, Hackfish, when I was in the 90s, when I was a kid, got dropped from a major label because we got signed up in the big Green Day offspring. Everybody wanted a punk rock band. I was 20 years old. Yeah. And we got dropped from that label because we didn't do shit. And Mike, we had toured with no effects, fortunately, and he put us out, you know. And he took a chance on Rise Against after Joe had 88 Fingers Louie and started his new band. And, you know, um, and he's done that for so many people, you know, mm. so many bands. Um, so, uh, you know, I think he's earned the right to do whatever he wants at this <laughs> point, you know what I mean? I talked to him just the other day. They were in Austin, Texas, and where I live. And uh, he said... This is it. He was, he was, I was like, man, come on. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, no, nope, I'm doing it. And I was like, all right, we'll see. We'll see. You so know. what's up in the, in the uh, Rise Against camp? Can we expect something new on the musical level? Um, you know, we just did about two years on tour. And um, everybody's got families. Mm. Um, I don't have children, but I have a wife who's here with me right now, thankfully. And... Uh, You know, after two years, you kind of want to not think about things for a while. We're doing festivals. We have some of these. We have some in the States. Um, but as far as next, I mean, of course, there's no big surprise that we'll do a record and tour. But I don't know when, mm. you know. But that's just how our band works. It's just, you know, it's kind of old school. And that I don't, people ask me sometimes, like, what do you do? How do you make it? What are you doing? It's like, I don't know if what we do or how we did it is how you still do it. In fact, I don't think that's how you still do it. But maybe we're Luddites or old men and the fact that we just still get together and make a record and then we go tour that for two years and then we, you know, go mm -hmm. home and just rinse and repeat and keep doing the same thing over and over again. Yeah. But what that will eventually happen. So there's that. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So thank you very much. Oh, thank uh, you for having me. Have, uh, have a great show. Thank you. I, I wrote down scribble shit. <laughs> awesome. In skate letters. It's kind of the, like, I used, that looks like my folders on, in high school. Yeah, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I didn't do work. I had attention deficit disorder, which I still do. Can you tell? Anyway.